Uh, yeah, just want to uh, you know give a big shout out and congratulations to uh, to Moses Moody uh, and the Golden State Warriors on winning a championship. Not many players get the opportunity to get playing time uh, on a championship team and then also be a part of uh, playing with incredible veterans and and uh, you know really cool to watch his rookie year and then see how it ended. About the release today about the foreign tour. Um, I know a lot of coaches, they like the practices the best, but it seems like that benefits any team, but especially a team with so many newcomers. Just what, what are your thoughts about the foreign tour and what, what that can do for you guys? Yeah, I mean, obviously the, you know, the, the amount of practice times that you're able to do, um, you know, with the 10 practices leading up to the trip will really be beneficial to us. Um, but the games will be really beneficial as well. Um, you know, I've been a, a part of a couple of these, uh, one with Arizona State when we went to China, um, and then at Nevada, um, we went to Costa Rica, and I thought it benefited players. There were some players that really struggled uh, at Nevada. Uh, Kendall Stevens, in particular, couldn't make a three-point shot, and we go to the regular season, and he breaks Jimmer Fredette's all-time uh, three-point record in conference. So. Um, but it's good for everybody to, to get some chemistry on the floor. It's really good for the coaches to play different uh, rotations and look at different combinations, both offensively and defensively. Um, it forces you to have a lot more stuff in um, schematically, knowing that you have uh, four games coming up. So I think it's, it's, it's really good for a, for a lot of different reasons. Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be great for that. Um, you know, we've tried to do a lot of stuff bonding-wise in a short amount of time. I think the guys have been over to my house maybe three times um, already. And uh, we're going boxing today um, as a team. And, and uh, we'll continue with that theme on Fridays to, dry, to try to do some unique non-basketball activities now that we're all together. This is our first Friday where, where the entire team is here. Um, but certainly getting on an airplane, traveling that far, um, knowing that the basketball, once we go on the trip, we be very, very limited. Uh, practice time will be limited or non-existent. There'll be games. Um, you know, but yeah, I think all the team meals that we're going to be able to have, I do think this team has become pretty close in a really short amount of time, especially with the thought you know, that there's only two returners. I, th I think that uh, the 11 new guys, although Anthony just got here, have, have done a great job of, of bonding on their own away from the coaching staff. Because you get, got released yesterday that you guys will be playing Baylor in January. Just thoughts on, on that matchup, seeing them again, and then I guess the schedule kind of maybe being in the early stages of taking shape a little bit. Yeah, the schedule's going to end up being pretty hard. Um, it's random, but um, I'm sure when the SEC schedule comes out too, they'll 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 be uh, some really challenging games. But you know, I think when when uh, you know when you're able to uh, make two elite eights, you're gonna you're gonna end up with some non-conference games like we have. I mean, if you look at if if you look at you know Maui. And the field of Arizona, Cincinnati, Creighton, Louisville, Ohio State, San Diego State, Texas Tech. You got the game uh, in Tulsa um, against Oklahoma. And we know how they uh, kicked our butts last year in Tulsa. And then, and then a Baylor road game and knowing that uh, in that challenge, uh, we played really well at home over the last four years or whatever, maybe longer than that, I guess, and uh, struggled a little bit on the road. So that's a challenging game. Um, that's, you know, the three in Maui, the Oklahoma game, and, and Baylor. That's five really challenging non-conference games. Um, but it'll be good for us as well. The 11 newcomers, um, you know, there's got to be challenges with that, but I also guess and there might be some positives in the early going. What are your observations on both sides of that coin, positives and maybe challenges? Yeah, I mean, challenges, uh, you know, I think it's, it's um, you know, we, we have to start back at the very, very beginning of everything. So many of the drills, uh, 
many of the station works that we're doing is what we did in year one. Um, you know, there's just so little carryover. It could probably a little bit uh, challenging for, you know, Kamani and, and Devo just because they've done it so much. So that, you know, those two guys, it's cumbersome or whatever word you want to use that that they're going through the mundane of, of, of going back to the very beginning. Uh, but for the other um, 11 players, we, we need that to happen. Um, you know, but every drill we start off with, every station work, we try to have Kamani and, and Devo be at the front along with Cade, Abergast, and, and, and Lawson. Those, you know, those, those four guys because they've been through it. Um, and then, I, you know, I think from a positive, there's, all, you know, there's always a freshness when you have new people. So, every, you know, the, the roles are completely up in the air. Um, they should be up in the air every year, but I do think when you have returners that have proven themselves at certain spots or, um, you know, there are some roles that are oftentimes solidified before you even get together, that's not the case with this team. Uh, everything is up in the air with this group of, of players because, again, there's only two uh, returning guys. So I think that that adds a um, – I don't know what word you used, Kevin, but it adds a freshness or a, a, a different type of feel to it. The previous Arkansas teams, you've talked about or recognized early weaknesses and strengths. Collectively, are there certain things that stand out as far as – as players yeah I think it's really um, too early but to answer the question Kevin um, and it does you know it doesn't mean that this is how it'll unfold come November but right now um, it's really really hard to score on this team um, you know if 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 a coach is an offensive coordinator um, in practice you'd much prefer to be the defensive coordinator right now because we're really long. We're different. Um, you know, we're, we're able to block shots um, at a high, high level right now. And again, it's early. Uh, there's very little five-on-five -five competition. I'm trying to get as much scheme stuff in, and we're trying to get footwork and technique down, and, and we call it TNT, talking technique. We're really working on some of those things, but in the limited live action, um, we should be a very good defensive team. We should be a team that looks different at the rim than we have in the past um, because we are able to alter shots and block shots. So there's very little uh, rim points going on right now. And we certainly have to improve uh, shooting the basketball as a team. Um, you know, last year that was one of the areas that, that you know, we were in the 300s when you look at rankings across college basketball and um, we got it we got to collectively across the board uh, improve our our shooting for sure Eric, Eric the drafts coming up I think a week from yesterday or six days from now or whatever that adds up um, it looks like Jalen's stock is rising w what do you think about how Jalen's doing w what kind of feedback have you gotten from NBA people just th thoughts on Jalen going into the draft yeah we've we've fielded a lot of calls over the course of uh, you know since he put his name into the draft but um, I'm not gonna you know say the name but um, you know, there was a general manager of, of a of a organization that called yesterday, and it was it was the first really extended conversation about you know where are you know where did we hear he was going to go, and and uh, there was actually two teams that had talked about um, possibly moving up in the draft. Um, so yesterday were the, were the two most significant phone calls that I have personally received um, about Jalen. Um, they were real phone calls. They were not uh, from scouts. Uh, they, were, they were not from people that don't live in the city of where the team plays. Uh, they were decision makers. And, and so I think that's really good when that starts happening. And I've told the whole staff, especially a lot, a lot of the young guys, Seven days in from the drafts when everything starts happening, just like trade deadline. I mean, you could pick any sport. All the stuff that's said a month before, it's all it's, it's, it's make-believe. And it's the same thing with the draft. As soon as you get inside of seven days, um, every year, doesn't matter what could be the NFL draft, could be the NBA, then it really starts heating up. 
And so, uh, again, those phone calls yesterday were, were really good phone calls. And, and uh, I think Jalen uh, has done a really good job of, of all the things that we got an opportunity to see him do. Now NBA people are, are having the opportunity to, to, to see uh, how fundamentally sound he is, how well he plays playing dribble handoffs, how well he sees the floor, how much of a willing passer he is, what a great talker he is in practice and when these guys are doing their three-on-three, six-man workouts. Um, and he has quite a few workouts still ahead of him as well move his way up into the first round or what do you think he's really doing to impress these teams yeah I mean I don't I mean I don't really want to speculate on where anybody's gonna you know get drafted um you know we knew last year that you know Golden State um really liked him I mean there was phone calls all of our players saw it happening live because they were all at my house and they saw the phone calls coming in uh, after the third pick, fourth pick, fifth picks from from a few different teams, um, but it's hard to say, Bob, because you know teams are still finagling for trades and stuff like that. Um, I just you know I think when any time you have a player like he's going to get drafted, I mean that would be all indications by what we're hearing, and and uh, the draft takes on wacky t twists and turns that nobody ever expects to happen. Um, you know, I, I'm just hopefully that he goes to an organization um, that really values what he is as a player. And I think that's why the, the, the Moses Moody fit is so special because um, they really value who he is as a player, who he is as a person, and, and most importantly, how he fits in to them both short term and long term. Yeah, you, I wanted to ask you about Trevin. You really liked him a lot, or you spoke highly of him before you guys played. Missouri last year what's it been like for you getting to be a little bit hands-on with him and, and coaching him now yeah I mean he made uh he made two threes uh the other day in practice Scotty um you know threes that maybe you know we haven't seen a big guy make where he shot fake to close out took a sidestep three off the bounce um and then he followed it up the next possession um, with a deep three so and that's an evolving part of his game I'm not saying that he's arrived as a as a three-point shooter but I am saying that he has what we've seen in practices with him and um, a few of the other guys is like degree of difficulty shots that maybe you know just don't happen but from a spot shooting standpoint that's where we have to improve as a team but getting back to TB I thought playing against him that he was a guy like if you look into the future, had a tremendous upside. Um, and he, we still feel that way. You know, he's so long, he can shoot, he can run, he can block shots, uh, has to get stronger. We hope that he becomes more confident as well as a player. Just watching Jordan Walsh in high school playing against some really good competition, it seemed to me he could defend all five positions. I saw him do it multiple times. I've heard you comment on that. So far, what have you seen from him defensively? And can he get to five uh, positions he can defend at the high major level? Or wh what's the ceiling there? Yeah, I mean, I think defensively um, and both sides of the ball. I mean, Jordan had a, uh, you know, he had a play the other day where we were working on down pins. And he did a great job of reading the defense that went over the top of the down pin. And he two foot faded and made a three uh, in the right corner a really, really difficult shot. Anybody that knows what a fake, what, when a player fade, fades off a down pin, and that's because he's got great explosiveness, Kevin, off, off, uh, off his jump. I've said it, I think, I've said it publicly. If I haven't, I've said it a bunch in staff meetings. He's like a violent defender um, because of his aggressiveness. We want him to continue with that mentality defensively, but also um, play within – uh, the concepts that we're putting in so that he stays out of foul trouble because he's so aggressive defensively. Um, sometimes he can put himself uh, where he tries to stab at the ball and, and uh, you know, but you'd much rather have a player be over aggressive than under aggressive. And he innately is an overly aggressive defender. Certainly right now can guard one, twos, threes, 
um, you know, it'll be really important for him this summer in the weight room um, to continue so that we can switch, be a switchable team so physically our freshmen can, can switch on to fives. That's, that's the, the last piece to, to the puzzle, I think, from a defensive standpoint is to get um, to be able to switch one through five where everybody can go down there and front the post. Um, that's, that's, that's where we would like to eventually get to. Nick Smith Jr. as a follow-up, what has he brought to the floor so far that you've seen? Has he surprised you at all? Is there anything that maybe you didn't realize he could do? Or no, I mean I think you know Nick comes with with um, you know as many of our freshmen come with such you know high expectations and stuff. I think the one thing with Nick is is uh, just his leadership, his toughness, and how hard he goes. Um, you know, for a lot of freshmen, it's just like it's a huge jump to go from a high school practice to a to a college practice. But um, he's been phenomenal uh, from a leadership standpoint. Just you just don't have a guy his age walk into a college practice. I don't know how many practices we're at, eight or nine or whatever it may be, where a guy just steps in and is really, really vocal. Um, you know, from the get go, and he's certainly done that. Yeah, Eric Anthony Black. I know he's just been here the the one day or one practice, but what do you think uh, about what he did on the Team USA and how that benefited him? And I, I guess they probably overwhelmed him on talent, but the teams they played. Just what do you think about what he did there, and maybe how how that can help him here? Yeah, it's one of my great disappointments so far is not going to Tijuana and getting a good burrito down there and watching AB play. Um, but we watched them all on live stream and. Um, He's, and I've talked to several of the coaches that were there with him. Um, Leon Rice, who I know really well from Boise State, we had, he shared some great stories about A.B. Um, in huddles and, and uh, in practice, um, and, then, and then some stuff in, in Tijuana that kind of shed some light on how he was interacting with those guys. Um, but I will say uh, his first practice was yesterday, and um, never seen a player come in the middle first of all in college guys usually don't miss eight practices or seven practices whatever we had um, but he comes in and li literally knew almost our entire playbook that we put in so far I, I kind of speechless I mean because I've gone through it all the time in the minor leagues where a guy guys are shuffling back and forth between the parent team and the and the minor league team and uh, but he literally was asking about third and fourth options on plays. And we got some guys that have been here since day one that are still front, trying to figure out the second option. And he was like, hey, on that weak side, that, what's the third and fourth option? What's the read on that three man coming off the four down pin on the 50 set? I was like, wow, like, you know, almost like a, in a quarterback room. You know, that's, that's what I thought I was in. I thought I was with a, an NFL veteran QB. Um, who was asking questions and had just missed a couple OTAs or something. One more college world. Yeah, we got um, time. I got nowhere to go. Okay. We well, I got a few more. I mean, I'm not, uh, um, um, you, uh, you said you're going to the College World Series, right? On Saturday, are you still doing that? I will be there tomorrow. Have you ever been to a College World Series? I've never before? been. Cannot well, wait. Yeah, what, what, what are your anticipations and what, what do you think about the teams? Obviously, looks looks pretty wide open. I mean, you, 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 you were, you've been in the, the, the Elite Eight the last two years, and that's what the College World Series is. It's eight, eight final eight teams. You know? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just so – I mean, just listening to Coach Van Horn's presser, um, you know, talking about, like, how hard it is to get there. And um, it's pretty interesting. I, saw, I talked to him at the, base, at the softball game before – the uh, NCAA tournament started and I went up to him and kind of said good luck and he was confident you know he he, <laughs> he said we're 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 good we're we're in a good spot that was before this thing started um, and I went back and sat with Danielle and said coach is ready man like he's he feels confident about his team and um, but my son's going over there with me Riley's going over there and and uh, it's a good little mini staff outing for us to um, Michael and I have never been to one. I'm sure Riley has, um, but it's going to be. I'm, we're really looking forward to it. 
I did have a follow up on Anthony Black. At, you know, having recruited him and, and observed him, and then watched him in, in Mexico, is he the kind of guy that can be a fixer at both ends of the floor? Sort of like what Jalen Williams did. Different position guys, but high IQs, attention to detail. Just curious your thoughts on that. Yeah, I mean, I think um, obviously with his size, um, it's really unique um, at the guard spot. Um, you know, he, he will be able to alter shots um, and contest and challenge, you know, perimeter shots with his, with his length and size. Um, but I think what, what's going to happen is guys are really going to like playing with him which is a characteristic that's probably not talked enough about. Like you talked about, you know, Jalen and being a different – guys really liked playing with Jalen. Um, and I think guys are really, really going to like playing with A.B. Again, I mean, I've only been around him for whatever, 45 minutes on the floor yesterday. Um, but I think guys are, guys are going to enjoy playing with him and, and he's got a high IQ and he plays both sides of the ball and um, – you know, again, just across the board, we got to we got to improve our perimeter shooting. We got to improve in the weight room. I think anytime you have six freshmen, you know, the weight room programs at the collegiate level are drastically different than high school weightlifting programs. So, um, you know, we're asking a lot of of our strength and conditioning program this summer to try to get, you know, six players up to speed. Um, you know, because I. You know, even looking back on our, you know, when we had Moses and 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 Jalen and Debo and those guys, like, you know, the weight room, um, you know, for Jalen, I thought it was a big step. Uh, you know, maybe minutes early on, a lot of it had to do with just, you know, what goes on in that weight room, physical condition, um, adding strength, all those type of things become really important um, and probably not talked enough about. Um, you know, with younger players. Just, just real quick, just early impressions maybe of, of Ricky and, and Jalen Graham and, and how they fit. Yeah. Um, first of all, for Jalen, I don't know if he's ever, if he's ever worked this 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 hard. I mean, that those are kind of his words. I think that, um, you know, what's demanded in the sand pit, what's demanded in the weight room, what's demanded, um, you know, in practice. Um, so I think all that he's still, you know. But he can score the basketball with his back to the basket. He's got a great floater, great touch. Um, we feel he can rebound. You know, this was a this was a week that we need. You know, we're going to have to talk to him about going to the glass a little bit more. Um, but uh, a guy that's really fitting in with the guys off the floor. And then Ricky, um, I mean, he has like he has at least one wow moment every practice, at minimum one. Um, it might be a dunk. It might be a. Uh, it might be a, a finish in, uh, in traffic. Um, but he's he plays with an incredible energy. I've never had a player in five on zero skeleton when we dry run our opportunity break um, in transition. I've never had a player in all the years, including the NBA minor league. I've never had a player run the wing so hard in five on zero skeleton dummy offense. Um, Maybe to some coaches they think, you know, they just mention it in a staff meeting. To me, it's, it's going to factor in his playing time that he runs that hard, quite frankly. Um, and he's doing it in five on O. Because what all this is about is who do you trust by how they conduct themselves daily in practice. And I got a lot of trust in Ricky, I can tell you that right now, just by how hard he's running, playing, doing the things that we want. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, you guys.